Welcome back to Spitballing Cards. In this video, we're going to be discussing Top Series 2, and if we still like it, a week after release. In this video, you have me, Scott, Phil, Chris, and Jeff. Ty is not here this week. He will be back next week if he is your favorite one of us. And in this video, we are going to discuss Top Series 2. We did a set review last week, and this week, now that it's been released a week, I want to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this product with you all. Um, I know in our group chat, we all talk about it, but I want to share those same thoughts with our viewers and hear what they have to say as well in the comments, because maybe they think of something we don't. So that's what I want to lead off with. What has, should we go with what have we liked so far? Let's do positive first, because I don't want to be just negative. What have you liked about Series 2 so far? Jeff, tee us up. All right. Uh, this is interesting. We talked a little bit about this on Blabbing About Slabbing last week. And one thing that both Chris and I agreed we liked the Jackson Holiday variations and the the nostalgic throwback to the Billy Ripken card. We thought it was pretty well done, and I, I'm a little disappointed at the total number of cards. We were hoping it'd be a little more short printed than it was, uh, but overall, I thought it was a great effort. We did get some comments about people thinking it was tops trying too hard or missing the mark or just. Uh, really going overboard. So it wasn't unanimous, uh, but that's one thing that I, I did appreciate them. And maybe that's because I was collecting at that time and that card really sticks out in my memory as a as a chase card, as it were, before there were really chase cards involved. So that's one uh, positive I'll give them. Okay. Any other thoughts about the fun face card from Jackson Holiday? <laughs> I, uh, I think I said when we were doing our preview, I, I just like Jeff, I really hoped it was going to be super rare. Like I was saying, like under a hundred, keep it. But this has done exactly what Tops wanted it to do. Everyone I've seen on Facebook, on Instagram, they're talking about this card. I've seen people go by retail trying to find it. It's got it's got Tops in the public eye. It's doing exactly what they wanted it to do. And honestly, I'm fine with that. People are excited about the product, and there isn't a ton to get excited about in this product outside of this. So I think it's great. I you know it it certainly changed. It altered whether I want one long term. I do want a one fun face card, but I will wait a while before I, I snag one. It's going to look really good next to a Ripken card. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. I, I, I think Topps did a, did a good job with this one. Which fun Back face card? With the Jackson Holiday. Which one do you want? There's like five, I think. Maybe I just five. want the regular fun face. Regular. Gonna, yeah. If they're all equally available, I feel like it makes the other parallels not quite as cool, personally. I'm assuming that they did based on what the, there's a ton of these on eBay and it seems like anecdotally without any PSA pops coming out yet, it seems like they're sort of following the pattern. Like for Ripken, the, the F face card, there's like 15,000 at PSA, not, not hard to find. Um, then you got the black box, the black scribble, and then the two, the white box and the white scribble. I think the white scribble is the lowest with like 130 or something at PSA. Yeah, I have not seen a lot of white scribbles. Saw cut. So, yeah, the saw cut PSA won't grade it, I don't think, because there's none on the PSA pop report. Oh, for this one? Even for the 2024? Oh, for the Billy Ripkins. Yeah, I'm just Billy. talking about Billy Ripkins right now, not not Jackson Holiday. So Here's it seems book. like if you scroll through, it seems like the, the whiteouts, the white scribbles seem to be a little bit more rare, but that's extremely <laughs> anecdotal at this point. But the fun faces are popping up all over the place. If I yeah, keep scrolling, though, they're, they're not, like, rare, I will say. No. They're not. No, they seem like they might be the fun faces might be more of a, a Vlad no number print run right. versus a Acuna bat down print run. But all anecdotal at this point. Yeah, I see about 143 sold, but that's if you actually put number 697 in the actual listing. Um, and there are, of course, are countless listed right now. So it's actually tough. And this is kind of a nightmare for like the price tracking tools. So sorry, yes. Ty market movers there's not a standard way that these have been listed um then of course you've got the regular short print which is i guess to answer your question scott that'd be one of the things that i did kind of like that they put the extended base short print whatever you want to call it um hitting pose mm -hmm. they put that in the product which we didn't know till literally like release day or day before um whatever i see the pluses and minuses there's no solutions there's only trade-offs with these sort of things so five variations versus two or three makes them a little less meaningful but more people get to get one the fact yeah. that these are printed more along the lines of billy ripkin who wasn't a good player by the way in that card still like was a cult classic 
right? So yeah. maybe Jackson Holiday doesn't need to be good for this card <laughs> to be worth money in the future. But you can see that the prices have come down quite a bit um, for the, and I was specifically looking for the fun face card. Uh, those have come down um, close to 50% or so since release. It could have done a better picture. Maybe that's just the way he looks. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> as Scott, as you would say, it uh, it is what it is, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually showed, so I was visiting uh, a guy who used to go to card shows. Like he was really big in the card scene and he really liked it, but now he doesn't really get out much. And I told him about this card and I showed it to him and I took him a pack of top series two to try to pull one. And he's like, he looks like the guy from the the Mad Magazine. Like that's not <laughs> that's a horrible Alfred picture. Newman. Yeah, yeah. We got that. Yeah, we, Jeff and I got that comment. Yeah, we our, got that. Yeah. So it, it's true though. It's it's not yeah. a great photo. It's not. Great. There's a really fun video if you're on Instagram. Uh, Tops shared a video of the behind the scenes of them like filming of taking the getting the picture, and it's kind of fun to watch. So they showed Jackson Holiday the the Billy Ripken mm -hmm. card. So it's kind of cool. He he knew what he was doing, which I yeah. like. Do you wish they would have kept this as like a golden mirror super short print? Or do you think the fact it's available is a good thing? I, it's probably in the long run, it's probably, it's a good thing that more people are going to be able to get it. Cause I think this is, this is just a thing for the fans and it's, I like it. But as, as Phil said, the prices have already come down 50%. Yeah. So as we've always preached, don't buy right when the product comes out, because inevitably you'll be able to get it cheaper later. No matter the challenge what. is we didn't know if it was a super short print. If right. it would have been, you'd have been screwed if you didn't buy it at the start, right? Maybe. Yes. And actually, full disclosure, one of the first ones to come up on eBay, I think it was $8.99 or best yeah. offer. And I texted Jeff and I'm like, you want to take a gamble that this is an, an ultra short print? What do you think? And as usual, Jeff is the, as Mr. Burns of the Simpsons would say, Jeff is the sobering ying. Uh, to my raging Yang, and he talked me out of it. And I appreciate that, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Well, cool. So I think we talked that card to death. It's a great card. What do we think of the other short print rookies? Are there any that you might be targeting? Obviously, there's quite a few, right? We have the two Jacksons, Holiday and Shurio. We have Wyatt Langford as well. Like, do any of those guys interest you? Or are you not picking those cards up? I'm going to wait for update. And see what their gold mirrors look like, and maybe a black parallel is parallels. More than, yeah. yeah, that's the downside of having these short prints. It's cool to to see a Jackson Churio in there, but without the parallels, it's really it's not as exciting as it could be. What else do we like about this set? Before we get to the negatives, all right. Can I can I share my screen? I'm going to show you <laughs> uh, an insert set that I did not know was going to be in there, and Jeff and I talked about this on on Thursday a little bit. But uh, the more I think about this, initially I was like, well, that's dumb. But Jeff and I got to talking about it. The more I think about it, the more I like it. And I feel like there's potential if they if they want to expand this. We came up with some really good ideas, and I'd love to hear um, what you guys think of some potential ideas. So let me uh, let me pull this up. So this is an insert set called Signature, or I think it's Signature Tunes. Yep. So Signature. it's a player, and then the artist who does their walk up music. Well, that's cool. So for that's, Soto. That's uh, a daddy Yankee. And there's a couple things that are really cool about this. Um, it's sort of, it's a nice connection between the player and the artist and the artist is famous in this case. And it's kind of a big deal that these two are on the card. They're both on card. Love it. Yeah. So many inserts in this product are stickers and this one is on card. So I yeah. feel like this is, this is the potential to be something really cool that could, that could stand out for a while. That's a big deal. If this card was not on card, it wouldn't even be, no. on anyone's radar. I don't it's think great that. design, big open spot for the autographs. Now, like Chris and I were thinking, what if you go back, get Mariano Rivera and James Hetfield, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. From Metallica? Great... yeah. That'd be amazing. Or like, I, we couldn't think of anyone for, that was in ACDC, but Trevor Hoffman and one of the ACDC yeah. singers, that'd That's be awesome. Yeah. Or Chipper Jones and Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, I would, I would need that card if that card existed. <laughs> Yeah. And by the way, uh, Scott, I think Larry Walker also used Crazy Train. So there could be a Larry Walker Ozzy Osbourne card. That'd Don't tell sick. me you wouldn't be interested in that. Uh, I would definitely be interested in that. Yeah. I wonder how much Ozzy Osbourne would cost Tops to sign. How much do they pay Daddy Yankee? A couple hundred bucks? A couple thousand bucks? What do we think? I, I'm not even going to speculate. I have no idea. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Sharon Osbourne, we were talking about this, would have to like 
sort of weekend at Bernie's Ozzy's hand around the pen to get the signature on there, but I'm totally fine with that too. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great call out though. I saw that. And I think I made a comment about how it's probably on cart on a, uh, a sticker anyway. So it doesn't matter. It does matter. Now that it's on cart, I think that's on more people's radar and I hope tops is paying attention. Do you think anyone from tops listens to us talk about baseball cards? Like, is there any chance anyone there listens to us? Yeah. If Damn. so, we love you guys. But don't do sticker autographs in your flagship product, uh, at least for the good stuff, right? Like Stroud and Wemby, put it on card. Like the stuff that you are touting and saying is important, put it on card. And I think people will take it more serious because like we mm-hmm. want to do, but it's just it's tough. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost like a, a red flag for any set. If all of the autographs that are included, if all of them are sticker autos. So at least have like some of the premier chases, like you're saying, yeah. Scott, like you, you need a subset. If you have a bunch of sticker autos and you have to offset it with a bunch of on-card autos, you just have to, or else it just makes the whole set look diluted and shitty. So yeah, And I understand entirely if they just can't for everything, because yeah. they're having all these not even like no name pitchers who debut once. It's kind of like a Bowman Chrome autograph prospect auto. They do it for the relief pitchers now because they have to. Like, I understand that, but the good stuff. Keep it good. People will be all over it. Yeah. And that could be something that maybe if you drop from 70 or 80 products a year down to 30 or 40, it might be a little bit easier to do something like that. Someone commented on our last video, at least I think it was my video on my personal channel. They said that the that Tops is told by the Players Association how many sets to produce. I don't know if that's true, but if it is and Tops' hands are tied... I want to apologize to you guys if you do. Well, I'm sure there's some negotiation in there. There's some negotiation. But my point is, if they aren't tied to do it, there's no reason why they shouldn't cut sets like crazy. Yeah. Don't make Stadium Club Chrome. I don't like it. Worst product of the year, right? Don't put stickers on Stadium Club Chrome autos. How about that? Uh, Yeah, yeah. That would make me. I can get over it. Yeah. When Stadium Club comes out, if the Chrome insert autos are on card, I will. I'll take it easy. I'll be all right. Cool. And then, all right, any other positive that we like? I thought the, that the Statue of Liberty, uh, I'll look it up. The Statue of Liberty cards are kind of cool. I think that they will look really great with Yankees players. So let me find it real quick. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, Mets fans. If they had a uh, a Soto in there, right? Soto's oh, Mets for- fans too. Sorry, Mets fans. They yeah, do- we did. Jeff makes a good point. We mentioned it, but yeah, Soto once again is on the box for this product and does not have a card in the set. I yeah, that sucks. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, a, a nice a gold mirror SSP of, of Soto with Judge. I mean, I, I could easily see that being a thousand dollar card. Yep. So here's the Statue of Liberty parallel. Here's a Yankee. Here's an Austin Wells. Like that's cool. Right? That's pretty cool. Maybe it's not that cool. I think it's cool, but that's one pro. I think this is pretty sweet. Uh, Freedom, America, New York, all of it is pretty cool to see. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Any other things that we liked? Actually, yes. Okay. So I I had mentioned, um, I'm sorry, there are two cards I was really interested in. There's two Freddie Freeman combo cards on the checklist. Okay. So now we know what they are. There's Freeman with Betts and Freeman with uh, Albies. And both those cards are, are actually are, are nice. I have no complaints. Uh, those, those cards are fine. And that the, the golden mirror of Freeman and Betts is actually, thankfully, a totally different image. It is. is nice. Okay. Yeah. But the I will say, if you're out there, if you're interested in these cards, look at the true photo variations. They look like little posters of, you know, two of your favorite players. These Those, those two cards look amazing without the borders. That's my favorite thing Topps has done in years, actually. And yeah, I'm, I agree. I'm in the minority with that. But those true photo cards, I'll show one. They're awesome. I don't think you're in the minority. I think anybody that sees them likes them. I just had some people say, like, it defeats the purpose of baseball cards. Like, I think it enhances the purpose of baseball cards. Is there a purpose to baseball cards? <laughs> and does that purpose involve having borders and <laughs> yeah, I mean, to waste our money? Is the what a weird thing to say? It defeats the purpose. That's if so we want, funny. they said, if we want a photo, we could go find a photo. That's what they said. Like, well, I mean, I, yeah, I guess. I can't. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue. Here's that. the Freeman bets. That's pretty sick. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice that's, job. that's sick. Yes. Hey, can I have one beef with the Dodgers? They need to put Freddie Freeman behind Mookie. I just I love that Freddie Mookie combo because Otani he's not like a situational hitter while Freddie is. I think it would help the whole team personally. 
this is, this is a rare moment where you and I are in agreement. I said that when they initially, when they announced the lineup, it didn't make sense to me at the time. Yeah, because now that I've been watching it, like watching last year with Freeman after bets when he gets on base at a high uh, rate versus Otani after bets, there it's yeah. a night and day difference of approach and how many runs he scored. Mookie had like a 400 OBP and only has 50 runs so far this year. It's crazy. So can we start? Right. Ta- can we stop talking about irrelevant players? Sorry, guys. Mookie's out. <laughs> Mookie's out. <laughs> Don't buy his cards. Bad investment. Okay. Any other thoughts? Okay. Are we, can can we get? I'm negative. done being positive. Can yeah, I be negative? Can I unleash some negativity briefly? All right. So the yeah. number one card I wanted to see was Shohei Otani's first Dodger card as a gold mirror SSP. We spitballed ideas. Um, they might be with. We could be with Mookie. It could be with Freddie. Maybe all three of them on one card. Like, how cool would that be? Yamamoto, maybe. Yeah, him and Yamamoto. Right. And uh, and yeah, it finally came out. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna share it. And this is what we got. Yeah, it's brutal. Just, just boring. Just dull. They got the most exciting Major League Baseball player, and this is the stupidest, most boring card I've ever seen. Yeah, that's brutal. I. I just don't get it. Also, and the gold mirrors are, are obviously as a big SS, SSP fan that I am, and I know Jeff is, we went through a lot of these and they're so boring. There are so many just dull portraits, a lot of close ups. Disappointing. Really, really disappointing. Now, someone had mentioned in our, we were, our live on Thursday that, you know, maybe Tops didn't have access to like opening weekend photos. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know when the cutoff. Phil, do you have any idea when like the cutoff would be for Tops to get an image for Series 2? I mean, at the no. very least, they could have got spring training images. We know he's yes. got a batting image in a Dodger uniform in the yeah. complete set, which came out a month earlier. Yes. I mean, it, it, based on history, it looks like they're fairly limited with what they can do. Um, there's some serious constraints there with time. So, like, I, I would assume they have the entire set pretty much finished before the season even starts. Then it's a matter of like, what can we adjust? What can we throw in? Right. What are those late alterations, if you will? Gotcha. Yeah. It's just, it's just such a, I know they had like, there could have been pictures from like the Korea series too. Yeah. There's um, some awesome Getty image shots. Because so many of these gold mirrors are just portraits and they're really dull. And a lot of them, I think Jeff and I even tracked a lot of them are Photoshop, like <laughs> from their players, older teams. This this is my early front runner for best golden mirror image of the entire set. I'm gonna share it. Give me a second. Yeah, you get one shot per year for these things. So yeah, yeah. Got to do it right, right? Nice. Yeah, that's cool. If you're a fan of the Diamondbacks, you need this card. Got to have this card. Great that's shot. Very cool. Yep, that's awesome. Can I say one beef with the golden mirror? I'm gonna I'm gonna steal the screen from you when you're ready. Yeah, go ahead. I, I I unshared. Like I, if this is a and like if this is a short print of Albies. It's great. These pure white borders don't look good. They just okay. don't look good. The fact why that did they them, change it? It's I ridiculous. don't know. In series one, they weren't that way, but in series okay. two, they look weird. They don't look good. Yeah. Yep. Straight up. And whoever designed these, whoever the graphic designer was who added the black gradient, great job because yeah, I didn't realize how way completely from the aesthetic. Of yeah, the, I didn't realize how that. good it looked until it wasn't there, and it looks bad, yeah. in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I don't get it. That, that's a cool picture of Albies, too. The whole pregame routine with Ron Washington, it's like one of the sort of the things the team was famous for. There's a great Riley photo at a stadium club last year showing that, too. But yeah, I, I want to know why the decision, like why they get rid of the black for the SSPs. The, the gold on the back makes them pretty recognizable. Yeah. You wouldn't think they'd have to, to do something to else. Save a little bit of money on black ink <laughs> that they didn't have to have half the card in black ink. Do you think they just forgot like a a plate or something? Like, is there something stupid that just happened on accident at the printing facility? They or is this be. an intentional decision? I would not be surprised at all. I would <laughs> lean towards it be. being an accident, right? I don't know. I I don't want to think that, but maybe. I, I don't know. This is so here's That's another gold mirror. Like Maybe They've the never second... changed the design in the middle of a year. Yeah. This one I get because it's not a great golden mirror, but sorry if you can hear my dog barking. I'm really That's sorry. Right. But um, I get it because, if, like Phil said, they're trying to get these cards into the product. Then you have to have these podium photos as their golden mirror. I get that. But still not the most appeasing photo. No, it's such a bummer. I mean, honestly, like there's three Guggenheim ads on this card. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I like I was saying, the the fact that they got the Otani in a Dodger uniform playing in the complete set version, which came out a month ago, makes me think at least they could get some spring training shots. If not, if, if they can't get the opening day or opening weekend shots, fine, but at least get some in the spring with them in uniform playing. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, there was a really cool picture. Um, there's a great, if you go to Getty Images, there's a really cool shot of uh, Otani and Yamamoto standing for the national anthem, I think for opening day in Korea. That would have been sick. That, that would have been incredible. Like, you could just see the, the story of that photo is, is, is amazing. It would be great on a card. Just two buddies waiting for the season together. Yeah, we got two, like, Japanese-born baseball players standing for the, like, American national anthem for the league they, like, just transferred into recently in Korea – <laughs> to open up the season and now they're teammates like it's it would just that would have been incredible and we didn't get it that stinks what do you guys think of home field advantage cards i've I never gotten pretty- into them but uh, i know that they're pretty rare so they must have some value collectability well actually yeah. i was gonna say the opposite if they were more rare would you be more into them because they're they're there's like thou- a few thousand of them they're not like that rare but if these were a couple hundred would these be on your radar for everybody here for me no but that doesn't mean that's not because of how they look it's just my my card budget is is limited and it it doesn't really go past ssps and tops blacks for the most part i mean this is an idea they're kind of taking from the other sports right like yes downtown downtowns yeah getting some images from their city which is cool. I like that idea, but I don't know. A lot going on on there. What do you think, Phil? I think it's cool for what it is. Would I buy these? Probably not. But it, and it's parallel? not just a budgetary thing. Like, I think you're being nice, Chris. It's, you know, whatever. Like, I think it's fine that they're printing 2,000 of them. Um, like you kind of said, Scott, like, I'd have the same answer as Chris. Printing fewer wouldn't change my answer as to, like, it being more desirable to me. I have owned a few in the past. I think it was, like, the first year. Somebody at a show like had like four or five of them and said like he was collecting the set. And I figured I'd, you know, buy them at whatever 80% of sticker and see if I could send one in for grading, but they're, they're tough. <laughs> I didn't end up sending any of them in. Yeah. They get, at that point, they kind of lost their buzz a little bit too. So I don't even think I profited off those cards. Yeah. I wanted, I want these to be cooler than they are. Like I, I wish they were more rare. I think they're fun talking about the city and stuff with specific players in particular. There's like real potential of them being like iconic. If the player stays the whole time with one team for their career, but they're just okay. Okay. Any other thoughts, negative, positive, neutral on top series two? How are you feeling? I also know I don't want to like be super overtly like negative constantly, but like, and I know mistakes can happen <laughs> and people that work at tops are people and they're just people trying to do their jobs. And I, I, you know, we appreciate whatever level of effort we get from them, but some mistakes just can't happen. There have to be, um, the quality control levels and stuff like this is 100%. Like it's just, it's, it should never, ever, 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 yeah. ever happen. So this is Gunnar Henderson's second year series two, uh, 1989, like insert auto. And they just randomly put the RC on this card. And this is going to like cost people money. Yeah. People that don't really know cards that much are going to buy this thinking this is his rookie card. And it is very much not. And it wasn't there in his series one 1989 card, but it is in his series two. And I just, I don't understand how this stuff happens. Yeah. And it's a true mistake because these, yeah. these sets where they have the, what it was this 89? Is that what you said? What year is this? Yeah, 99. The 88, like there's not a huge difference. If you didn't collect in the era. You don't know the difference. It's not like it's, Trade, I don't know a few years ago they did Trey Turner. We had a rookie logo. It was Trey Turner in 2023. If you buy that, it's your fault. But with Gunner, where he's a young guy, it's definitely Top's fault. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, what's that red thing on it? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, what is, is that? It, is it fuzzy? Is it blood? What, what are we looking at? Right I think it's oh, something yeah. on the fence behind him. Oh, no. no. It's something on the card. Like um, what, what's going on? I had to mention that so people didn't think we were talking about that. I think that's just a smudge. I... Yeah, let's uh, let's just go ahead and stop looking at that. I don't know what that is. You better soak that card. Yeah, that needs it's, a, it's a gunner blood parallel. Pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe let's check the DNA profile. Yeah, DNA. Yeah, I, I, hate, I hate stuff like that. I hate to think because someone's going to spend like three hundred bucks on that on eBay or more, thinking it's a rookie and it's not, and that's that's too bad. It's kind of like when they did those reprints a few years back. Where 
they were just like the like a really epic card, but it was just a reprint, and that still fakes people up to this day. So yes. they're just adding more value to the people that are opening it, guys. Should be a good thing. Just kidding. It's <laughs> um, yeah. I think it, regarding inserts, to go back to that, I, I think I, I liked what they did with the Top Scrum update last year. So maybe that's where we should expect. You know, the image variation stuff will be across multiple products, but with regards to nice looking inserts or maybe they can build something with some sort of legacy, like with home field advantage, I think where Scott was getting to is like, it could have like really caught on if they made these limited for a number of years in a row, right? With Topps Chrome update, um, the Celebration is one example, like some of those things, if they continue to do those and continue to make them limited, maybe that's the play for inserts. So maybe that's what we'll have to hold out for. And Paul Skeens won't be in Topps Chrome, so we'll be in Topps Chrome update. Yeah, I have twice now I've been sniped. I was trying to buy a Rafael Devers red red parallel of that Celebracion card where he's got the inflatable dumbbells. It's such a cool looking, ridiculous card. And I, I got out sniped twice. It's brutal. So I have a question for you guys in Celebracion cards. Celebracion means celebration in Spanish. Okay, that's the answer my question. It's not just Latin players. Because we have Tatis, we have Luis Robert, we had... You know, all the players, Rafael Devers. If I see a Mike Trout here, so definitely not the case. Yeah, Bobby Witt has one, but Acuna does not have one. There's no Braves. There's no Brave player on that checklist. I was really bummed. Because if there was a Mookie of this card, I would think it was awesome. I'd totally yeah. go for it. Because I think the base are numbered to 99, and I love Yeah, like, like Phil said, I hope I hope they keep it limited. Sometimes what we've seen happen is something becomes popular, and then they just flood it out there, which would really – dilute the value of the future ones as well as the past ones i think so i hope they do keep it limited they should they should and i like that the that should, rainbow yes. is limited the right even the rainbow being the true colors is cool yes no Except yeah for, I, I like those cards a lot good uh, good callback phil look at that jonathan india. india i mean that's a that's yeah, a badass know. image yeah what it's do you like guys think this year. What, what do you guys think of the hidden gems i should have given more to the like these are the these are SSP, super short prints that are literally one in 60,000 packs in random sets. You can get them in Tops Heritage. You can get them in Top Series 1. You can get them in every mainline set. And they're really cool. Like, what? I, I think that concept is cool. Yeah, do you think I like they ever tack on? Like, do you hate the design? Is that why? Like, mm -hmm. these have to have something, right? Yeah, I like, the, I like the idea more than the execution. To me, the, the style makes it look like kind of just a, a cheap Panini insert to me. But I love the idea of a set that goes through all of their sets, a very yeah. rare subset. I like that idea. Other sports, too. It's in racing. It's in uh, their, obviously, right here is the Bowman U. It's into soccer. Like, it's across four different products. So we're going to see these in basketball and football when it happens, like, guaranteed. So maybe those are something that could be the downtown of the future but i bet they look great in person it's just i wish that they had more value here's a messy as an example Ooh, it's pretty cool yeah. for if now you that's... scroll up, there, there's an otani from this year i think if you scroll up and it looked like uh he's in a dodger uniform and there it is huh? it's a cool card to me yeah. i don't know yeah for now these are good cards to sell to repackers that yeah. specifically target case hits of liquid players so but I, I get, I see your point. Like this is a pretty cool concept for sure. Like Fighting with the kabooms, uh, maybe they're kind of stealing a page off the book of Panini here with like the kabooms. I'm pretty sure now, maybe not those cards. The color blasts. There's certain inserts, certain like very desirable inserts that you can pull from multiple Panini products. I think. Yeah, I think it's how, great. How deep is the checklist that like Marco Luciano has one? Yeah, that's. Uh... That's a good question. Are they seeing all the top rookies? Is that what their goal is here? Where did I pass Luciano? Yeah. Here he is. He's been good, though, hasn't he? Or am I thinking of Helio Ramos? No. I'm thinking of Ramos. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's that's the type of card that I think, like, kudos to tops. You know, I, I like that, personally. Rare cards are cool. Maybe they'll be valuable in the future. Okay, any other thoughts in Series 2? Or is that a good place to wrap this thing up? No, but I would like to say in the comments, if anyone has any suggestions for other player versus artist for walk-up music combinations they'd like to see, I would love to see these in the comments. Like, because it's just, there's stuff, we, we don't see or hear music from all the teams. Right. Like, I know Braves guys. Oh, we, someone said Edwin Edwin Diaz and uh, the trumpet guy. 
Is it Timmy Trumpet? Tommy Trumpet? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's the connection's all going to be closers, like, because who cares about hitters' walkout songs? That's kind of my opinion. Especially if you don't go to games, you're not going to really. Yeah, you, you don't know, hear them exactly. You, you don't hear them. Gonna, they and, use and, and no, but if, change if it's your guy, you'd know it. I think that'd be pretty cool. There's yeah. there's one player that I bet we all know the song, at least Charlie Blackman, Your Love, every time he comes up. It's like really iconic in Colorado. The whole crowd sings along to it. It's pretty cool. It's a like that's one. That's one that would be awesome. Yeah, Bryson Stott. I don't know what song it is, but I know the Philly fans yes. sing uh, Bryson Stott song, whatever that is. Oh, A-O- yeah. A-OK, isn't it that one? I don't know. I think it was also what... famously for Braves fans when Smoltz was a closer. Um, quick diversion here. He didn't have a song that, that he regularly used. So they were rotating through. And I guess they asked him for recommendations. And he's like, I don't care. Like, you do whatever you want. Like, I'm fine with it. So they were just trying new things. And then one of the, um, their AV guys played Dancing Queen when Smoltz came out for a save. So that day, like he, there, I think there's video of, it, of him looking up as he comes out. So from that moment on, it was thunderstruck for him. Like he, that he drew the line. I don't think that guy was ever allowed to choose music again. That's but sick. I would, if they short printed like a John Smoltz with one of the ABBA guys, I would, that would be amazing. I'd need to have that card. That's hilarious. You guys ever thought about what your walk up song would be? Oh wow, that's dead silence. I have, which is why I say that. Oh, I would oh, I would want to make the monster mash work somehow. The Halloween song. That's a fantastic like song, Halloween. by the way. We know you like I, those Halloween. I love movies. Halloween. I think it's something the crowd could sing to if it had a long enough snippet. Like I think it's cool. Monster Mash is Halloween? the answer to one of my favorite, like really random trivia questions. I can only ask around Halloween, but what it's the only song to reach number one on the Billboard top one hundred to have the word electrodes in the lyrics. Really? Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. I that's would have to pick uh, Mob Deep, Shook Ones. You guys know that one? Jeff might. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I probably wouldn't do that. Or Obi Trice, We All Die One Day. You know that one? We All Die really, One Day. I wouldn't really choose those, but just some thoughts. Some, some of our viewers laughed at that comment, Phil. Just not us. <laughs> yeah. Because we don't know. All right. My, my uh, first thought for me would be Machine Head by Bush. Great one. Great song. I like that yeah. song a lot. I like the opening to it, it's, it's pretty aggressive. Need to get fired up. You know what? Maybe we need to make a new spitball and intro where all of our walk of songs play. It would demonetize us every episode and make zero dollars. <laughs> but man, it right. would be cool. We could like fade in each square, right? Like it starts <laughs> with like four black squares, and then you fade in with yours, and then Phil fades in with his. That could be really cool. Phil fades into Dancing Queen like John Smoltz. <laughs> and looks around. <laughs> Okay. All right. I think it's a good place to wrap this up. This is getting this is getting off topic here. But thanks for watching, everybody. Let us know in the comments down below what your walk-up song would be, and we'll see you in the next video.